What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Man Bites Film, episode 62. Of course, you coughed during my introduction. My as bad. always, as always, I'm one of your hosts, Brandon. <laughs> Joining me is the man that is super rude, William. Why am I super rude? I was the one coughing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, he he wasn't coughing. He was choking on his chicken. That's what it was. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> the man. Coughing. I was Pikachu. And the man that choked on a chicken earlier, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> once coughing, once choking, you know. Yeah, we're all having issues, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> it's Florida. It happens. <clears throat> yeah. As always, uh, if you are joining us for the first time or the 62nd time, we are a weekly movie podcast where we talk about movie news. We review one movie all together, and at the end, we review three individual movies. So, Lewis, take it away, buddy. Yes! So, amazing news. We were all super excited about this one show that was going to be on the DC uh, platform. Oh, yeah. Swamp Thing. And they canceled it. Yeah. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? It didn't even get through like the first season and they canceled it. Yet, so, we have no fucking clue what the reason is. Creative the, differences, I've heard. Actually, no, actually, that's actually, bullshit. It's kind of funny because I was literally just watching, before we got on the show, I was literally just watching a show um, on uh, on it. And it's like, obviously it's kind of like speculation, but it's also based on like facts. Uh, it seemed that money was an issue creative differences with another issue um there's actually an amazing article by screen rant that goes through all the different points and invalidates all those reasons they're all speculation and they completely invalidate it by proof of quotes and things that have been said or released since the actual uh announcement of it so it they don't know what the reason is. They have not made it public, and all well, the speculation. The fact that it's DC and they just shit or anything that's good. Yeah, pretty much. Because from what I've heard, it's fucking phenomenal. It's a horror but, show. It's yeah. more of a horror show than anything. Exactly. So yeah. talking about complete trash and and utter garbage. Um, perfect segue into Agents of Shield. Mm. Are... Oh no! You can't know. You can't know. <laughs> Agent, yes. It... yes, it is. That is crap. Will it? Show... Will. Will, 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 will. No, 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 I'm going to get shit on for this. I just literally found out that the Asian girl in Agents of Shield is the voice of Milan. <laughs> I did not know that. I was unaware of it. I, I will wholeheartedly agree with my cousin on this one that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a hot piece of garbage. Dude, I couldn't get past the first two episodes, and I tried four different times to watch that show. It is garbage. Uh, they just have no chemistry whatsoever. It is complete flat performances, and just the the pacing, the music, the cinematography, it, it's like 90s bad sitcoms. It's horrible. And they are going to be tackling the secret invasion um, and oh, really? filling in the gap of the MCU. So that, it seems kind of interesting. And the fact that they're going to be bringing in a lot of new people and a lot of new talent. I hope it's talent and not garbage like the previous ones, but we will see. <laughs> I mean, it can't be that bad if they're tackling the, uh, the, the secret invasion. I I'm know. I'm just very surprised that this show has lasted this long. I thought they were weren't they going to cancel it like a year or two ago? I think they were going to yeah. cancel it like four or five times. MCU movies are making too much money, so they need something to fill in the gaps in between. Yeah, but if I'm not mistaken, like last time I read up, like uh, Agents of Shield isn't even like near the movies. Like they haven't even tackled like Infinity War or Endgame or any of that stuff. <laughs> I don't know, but so, uh, uh, I don't know what the reason is or why they're taking such a big loss because there is a, it is rated incredibly bad for a TV show and the ratings are not good on this show. So I don't get why they're, they're continuing it. If not for I, just, I'm glad that they're tackling the secret invasion, but by the same token, I'm sad that it's going to be on like TV wise. Cause we all thought the secret invasion was going to be like phase four of the MCU. They mm-hmm. said already that 
uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all TV shows that are Marvel-related Marvel are going to be intertwined with the movies immediately. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking think, that it's going to be filling in the gaps. I th- I think that Marvel, the next like main villain in Marvel is going to be Galactus. I have an odd feeling. That would be interesting. Yeah, I can see that. I could totally see Galactus being like the main villain of the next like saga. Oh, I wonder if it's going to be Adam. Because Adam technically is even stronger than Thanos. And they have oh. speculated his coming, in, obviously, at the end of um, Guardians 2. Of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. And now Guardian 3 is going to happen. Which now, with the, the announcement of Chris Hemsworth, or Hemsworth, sorry, that he's retiring from Hollywood. Wait, after what? After MIV. Yeah. He says that he's retiring from Hollywood because he wants to spend time at home with his family. Which I okay. totally, like, I totally understand that. I'm totally with him on that one. Like, interesting. It, 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 it sucks. Like, no, it sucks. Like, it's great when you're an actor, but by the time, by, by the same token, when you're as big as you are, like he is, um, it stinks because you kind of like, you know, your kids get old and daddy's not around, and Mark, yeah. and he's like, I don't want that for my family. I want to be there for my family. So he's calling, like, he's retiring from Hollywood. Now, I'm going to call bullshit on that one. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I am too, but by the same token, I'm like, if he, if it is not bullshit, does that mean we're not getting a Guardian of the Galaxy? Because everybody was looking forward to that. I'm pretty sure if Marvel or Disney, more likely, comes up to him and they're like, hey, We'll pay you this amount of money to come back. (laughs) Yeah, it's he'll be like, okay, sure, I'll come back. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna call bullshit on um, him. What was what was the actor's name? Honey, I just want the kid. He was also in Ghostbusters. Uh, Rick Moranis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They approached like he retired after his wife um, passed away of cancer because he wanted to, you know, obviously raise the kids and. He wanted to be there, given the fact that they, um, like, literally, he walked away from at the top of his game to raise his kid. And over the years, he's been approached. People have thrown money at him, and he has said no. I don't know. So, I mean, it, it remains to be seen, and we will see what happens. But I'm really hoping that we don't... Um, I really hope Chris Hemsworth continues because he's a freaking great actor, dude. And I, I'm kind of, even if it's not Marvel movies, God, do something else, dude. Do do Cabin in the Woods. Continue making movies like that. I mean, his his. I mean, he's doing, he's doing uh, Man in Black right now. Yeah, yeah. True. He's literally down the street right now at the premiere. Yeah, I, I love you guys. I, I'm, I'm giving up meeting him to to be here. I'm not excited for Men in Black. Neither am I, honestly. The last one was garbage. I was excited to the possibility of having to go getting to meet Thor. <laughs> then you why didn't you just Thor. go? <laughs> because yeah. we were recording. Did you miss that? You part? dumb bastard. You should have gone. Yeah, well, you know, priorities. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Louis. So, what's the next thing? All right. So, SDCC is coming up in a month. And. They are storming Hall H, uh, Game of Thrones, that is, of course. They are taking over Hall H, and if anybody doesn't know, Hall H is the main hall. They're the ones that last year was run completely by, uh, what do you call it, um, Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers this year dropped the ball and gave it to Game of Thrones. That what, means What convention is this? Uh, San Diego Comic Con. Oh, San Diego. Okay, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. And for them to get the main hall, that means they're going to be making major announcements. And that means everyone from Game of Thrones is going to be there. So anybody that's a fan and hasn't gotten their tickets yet, uh, you're screwed. So everybody that got their tickets, enjoy Game of Thrones. Good job. <laughs> Well, Marvel's going to be at SDCC as well. A minimal force. That last year they had crap. They didn't have much there either. Um, they they have a minimal presence. They they have their own thing going now with with Disney. So everything's through Disney. 
Yeah, but I mean, like, they have to announce the four uh, phase four. That's being announced at D twenty four. They've already said it. When when is D twenty four? I think it's in August. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I. That's I all. I noticed they're waiting for Spider Man to come out for them to drop everything. Nope, they're dropping it in August with uh, D24 um, or D23, whatever the hell it's called. Um, D- D23. <clears throat> there you go, whatever. I, I didn't remember what it was. It's the Disney thing. It's the yeah, Disney it's, convention, basically. Yeah, basically. And they they drop, they're using that now since obviously they're owned by Disney. So they, they've been pulling out of SDCC for the last two years. They really haven't had a presence much from what I've heard, because I haven't been. Um, but yeah, like they don't do major announcements there anymore. Next thing, Amazon Prime is working on Dark Tower, the TV series, and they've already cast it Michael Rooker as one of the the people. Really? Yep. Hi. That is going to be interesting, and hopefully they do justice to Dark Tower and Have they that shit movie. Yeah. yeah I, I'm like, I was say, like, I'm like what they did for the, the movie theater. Yeah, I don't know. The, the movie was, it was probably a four or five. Oh, you're, being, oh, you're being nice. It wasn't terrible, but if you've, okay, it wasn't terrible if you've never read the book. If you've read the book, then it is complete shit, and I would probably say that you would give it a one or two. Um, because it's completely god awful compared to the book. I mean, but, would you say that Dark Tower would be like on the top one hundred? Like, you know, like we have like a oh bucket god, list no, like, no, 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 never. You think Dark Tower book should be on the top one hundred for like books yes. to read before yes. you pass away? Yes, for sure. Absolutely. So that I mean, yeah, there's a huge discrepancy. I'll give <laughs> you that. For those listening, no. We're not like trying to hint that we're starting a new podcast about books. That was just me asking a question. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Coming soon because you know we don't have enough on our plate. You're right. That's yeah. No. No. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, so next thing about movie news: Are you afraid of the dark? Is get, getting a limited series revival. And they are going to be bringing back this amazing TV show, which was the spark of interest that I got for for horror movies and all my insane fascination with with really awesome storytelling. Honestly, it started from this. This was such spark. a good show. Such yeah. a good show. Um, did you know that they're also bringing back all that? Yep, that was the next yep. thing I was going into. Yeah, there you go. All that and uh, what do you call it? Uh, Blues Clues is getting a revival. Oh shit! I didn't know Blues Clues is getting yeah, a revival. Yeah, Blues Clues getting a revival, and she looks good too. All girls gonna make got a makeover done. She all like she is no longer like the paper mache. It's now computerized. Oh so, shit! Okay. Yeah. I used to love Blues Clues as a kid. Ooh, and all that. Of course, I I you know I grew up yeah, in the nineties. Yeah. I was. Uh, you know, I I was born in the '90s, so I kind of grew up with like the all that and and. Uh, Dude, Prometheus yeah. and Bob was my jam. That shit, <laughs> that little segment, that five minute segment, it was fucking. That's the one with the with the uh, the, the action alien. figures, right? No, no, the alien and the and the yes. uh, Neanderthal. The, yes, the alien yes. is trying to teach him how to do things, and then there's a monkey involved as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I vaguely <laughs> remember that. What's the one with the the action figures? I don't remember, but I know what you're talking about. That one of the guys is like one of the action figures is like completely naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I dude, uh, are you afraid of the dark? You so freak me the fuck out, dude. Yeah, I love that. That that shows amazing. like like legitimate. Even though like now I've gone back and I've watched some episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark, and it does not hold up. It's it doesn't hold up, but the stories are really good. So, the acting is really fucking bad, though. Yeah, Holy but I'm, shit. Well, I mean, like, like most most stuff that we had growing up was like. Look at the Power Rangers. Like, you no, know, we thought it was yeah. great, and now it's like, oh my god! Like I, I watched I watched the Mighty Ducks the other day. Hey, no, 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 no. 
Oh, okay. Dude, Z Mighty Ducks is like my movie. That's what got me into hockey. That's what got me into like I will never fully shit on the Mighty Ducks movie. But oh my god, as a hockey player and watching the hockey scene, I'm like, why have they gone through the blue line four times before they get to the goal? Like the continuity of that movie when it comes to the hockey scene are atrocious <laughs> but growing up when i first saw it when i was 13 14 years old it was like citizen kane of my of my, of my generation yeah so yeah, yeah. uh you know and, and a lot of stuff like i'm sure that if you watch goosebumps now growing up oh, you horrible. know since like since you grew up it, it's probably gonna be like you know um it's oh my terrible. god yeah, oh they're terrible that it's is, bad but terrible. growing up the one goosebumps movie that uh episode that got me and to this day, I think back to it every time when I hear it. it was, I don't remember the name of it, but they are, they're by the seaside. They're in a house, and every night this ghost shows up and starts playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Oh. And it was just the fact that it was the Moonlight Sonata that got me every time. I don't remember because that episode. Still, literally, it gives me goosebumps. Yeah. I don't. I don't remember that episode. I pro. I probably seen it, but I. I can't like. I remember actually reading that book. Never. I don't think I've ever seen the episode though. I didn't know they made an episode about that. Oh, they did. Oh. Um, so yeah. Uh, so a bunch of old Nickelodeon stuff is coming back. Let's see how those do. I, let's see if the new generation, I guess, of like kids that are watching TV now enjoy. You know the revivals of these shows because they're the ones that will make. Oh, it or I think break it's it. going to be mostly the the adults that watch this as kids going back and watching it. You think and so? trying to introduce their kids to that? No, yeah, okay, I could totally, yeah, I could see that. Could but totally it'll be kind that. of like a family bonding experience, you know? That, yeah, that's... yeah. Oh, FYI, guys, you're going to hear thunder in the background. There's a thunderstorm. It's Florida. Like, yeah, I, me too. I'm. It's raining over here, so yeah. If you hear thunder. Or rain, I guess, then whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, you're going to be hearing that all summer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much. But I mean, like, yesterday here, it was, like, really crappy weather. Um, like, we had the, um, like, a helicopter crash. Like, yes. three blocks from where I live. Oh, like, shit, that I, was that I close? Was wow. Yeah, it was. I, I'm on 49th. That was, it was on 51st. So, like, two oh, wow. streets over. Oh, um, but I mean, like, it, kudos rest in peace but kudos to that pilot because yeah. he could have easily just bailed and that helicopter like landed in, in or crashed in the middle of um, a busy ass street in manhattan uh, basically uh, well no you have to remember 51st is on the back end of uh, times square so he was coming from downtown so yeah but had he decided to like bail or like even two minutes earlier that helicopter would have landed right in the middle of Times Square. Wow. Damn. So, kudos to that pilot for staying with it. Yes, it cost him his life, but he saved countless other lives. Yeah. May he rest in peace, truly. Um, Damn. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to like diverge. Um, but, um, goosebumps. Yes. Yeah. Shitty weather. Uh, yeah, shitty right. weather. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so anybody else got any movie news that they want to bring up on the episode? Uh, not really. Um, no, I went to see Godzilla. It's a good monster movie. Not the best monster movie there is. I was hoping it would be like a major tie-in with uh, Kong. There wasn't. There was um, supposed to be. Maybe they cut it. There was what? Uh, well, supposed I mean, to be they, what? Do, they do mention Skull Island a couple times. No, but so there's supposed to be like, like a proper tie-in, like Marvel tie-in from what they were saying. And I was like, okay, there's well, nothing. There was supposed to be a proper Godzilla movie too, but that didn't happen. So okay. hey, here we are. Hey, uh, all right. So th- this argument has to be made. Um, Godzilla movies, it was bad lines, horrible dubbing, and uh, what do you call it? Just fun monster movie well no there's a lot of bad godzilla movies like bad godzilla movies and well yeah there is but that's not because of the the like this one it did everything i wanted it to do as a godzilla movie 
Okay. I, I haven't seen it. I, I haven't gotten around to see it, but I wa- I've been wanting to. I just haven't gone. So Godzilla is not one of those movies that it's not on the top 100 of all time. Oh. It's not a movie that you have to go watch or anything like that. If you like monster movies, go watch it because it's going to be fun. But it's not a great movie. Even the original one, and it, this is like blasphemy in the film industry, but it's, yeah, it did a phenomenal oh. thing with, uh, with uh, production and kind of building this this character up like like. Freddy Krueger and all these other monster uh, characters did as well. The but person's really slow. <laughs> it, it's not a great movie, and it doesn't deserve like high praise. These are five movies, five out of ten movies. They're not. I wouldn't go. They're that, not going to be. I would better. go that low. I don't know. That's a little uh, harsh, but I don't. Like, I don't think they're like in phenomenal movies either. I I expect it to be just a decent movie. That's it. I don't expect it to be phenomenal. I don't expect yeah. it to be like this grandiose thing. I don't but expect a plot. Honestly. honestly, who the fuck goes into a Godzilla movie wanting plot? Who really cares about the the human characters in Godzilla? I don't. And that's the thing that they did with this movie that they screwed up is that they tried. No, but that's in every Godzilla give... movie. I, I know. And that's the part that they keep fucking up on because it's like, just give me monsters. Just give me random throwaway characters that the, I don't give a shit about. I don't care what they do. Give me one-liners. Give me freaking A-team one-lines. But they, and they have to make a plot for the film. Back. As much as like I want to have what you're saying, like you know, just kaiju fighting each other, they have to have a plot. So that's what the, char- the human characters yeah. are there for. Yeah. You, know? you can't just like Godzilla. Like no... There's no dialogue w- throughout the entire film. It's just Godzilla shows up, then King Ghidorah or Mothra, and it's like, okay, no, you fighting. set up the you set up the battle, but you don't have to build all these characters. Just set up the battle, set up the scenery, and go battle. I agree. Okay, I agree with that. And that that's not a plot. That's just storytelling. That that's not. Applied. It just bothered me that he kept calling him Gojira, which like, I understand it's Gojira or whatever. But like that was the part that I liked. Call him Godzilla. Call him Godzilla. Like let it go. Nobody's gonna call him Gojira. Nobody's gonna want to go your I way. Know. I'm. I'm. I don't mind. It, like I understand. You're talking about the Japanese guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like in Japan, it's called Gojira. Like I don't know. It's eh, it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't bother me either. That that scene actually. I like the fact that they gave a little. How's the fighting though? Like honestly, oh, I don't give a shit that you spoil because fuck it. It's a it's a movie about monsters fighting each other. Dude, but, there's some <laughs> awesome battle sequences. Spoiler alert: the monsters fight. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> all I know is, bro, fucking King Ghidorah. Ooh, ooh, God. And this is the other thing that I will give. It feels like a Transformer movie. Like, okay. you know how, how the special effects you see that, like, you can't see who the fuck is who? Some of the battle sequences no. are shot like that. No, no, you no. I mean, wait, we were watching the same movie? Because, like, at no time did I have a trouble figuring out who was who. It was just, it was, they were going, like, way too close in certain scenes. And it was like, no, just give me the shot from far away. Give me the long shots like they do in all the other ones. And it's like, I enjoy that. And see, seeing there's, the whole city burning in the background. There's, what, three monsters other than Godzilla, right? It's King uh, Ghidorah. Four. Oh, there's four. The main ones, yeah, there's Mothra, there's... Um, King Ghidorah and Rodan, right? Yeah, those are the, the four main ones. Well, yeah. yeah. There was one scene that, I don't know why, but this scene in particular just... It was the only also, scene... I was they, pissed that it destroyed Fenway Park. I'm just going to go on the record. <laughs> Um, there was one scene that was really cool that it's the only scene that I'll actually say was actually cool with the, the humans is the scene where the mom is holding the little girl out to to stretch out her arm, the little girl's arm, to be able to touch uh, one yeah, of the monsters. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was, that was actually you cool. You know what was not cute? <laughs> the fact that, um, I am sorry, a ceramic bathtub cannot hold up a roof. <laughs> that is the, the ceramic bathtub is the new Indiana Jones with the river joiner. Oh come on! Okay. No, 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 no! That is a big, like it's freaking a, like it's seven a, by seven piece of roof. It's a fucking two movie. Stories it's a into a bathtub and it didn't even crack the bathtub and her and there's enough room for her to put her hand out to be seen. 
it's oh, a Jerry it's a it's a fucking movie about four massive monsters fighting each other, and you're bo- you're bitching about a fucking roof caving in. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Okay, so anyways, before we go on a full review about Godzilla, Jesus. Okay, uh huh. <laughs> so moving on, next. Oh, right. okay. Oh, okay. We're, we're, okay. we're done. Okay, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah, we've been going for a while on this uh, on the first segment. All right, guys. Uh, stay tuned after this quick little break when we come at you with our new not so new segment, the movie bucket list. Not live. When we were kids, we all had our go-to happy place, our escape. We gravitated to art, movies, bands, musical, or books. Something that did not make us feel alone, but empowered us in a world of love, magic, and adventures. Come with me as we explore the Wizarding World with William Phoenix. Alright guys, welcome back for our new Not So New segment, The Movie Bucklist, where William... Uh, chooses a movie at random from this uh, list he has, and he surprises Lewis and myself, and we decide if it should or should not be on this list. So, William, what is yeah. it? Um, there's really no much time or reason behind it, other than the fact that I just I, I happened to see the movie over the weekend, and it reminded me how good of a movie I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was I want to say the first movie for this actor. That was away from his usual genre, and everybody was like giving him, not giving him, but they were saying he was not going to do good in it, and then he just hit it out of the ballpark. The cast is amazing as well, and it makes you feel like you're always being watched, which, you know, sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. But this guy's always being watched because he, his life is a TV show. Oh. We, if you don't know what movie wait, wait, about we did right this. Now, we did this one already. Did we really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this, this is yeah, the best did. segment ever, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, okay, so. And oh, three, this, two, one. This is how so bad. I decided... <laughs> so I decided Please to. Please keep in this. Just keep it in, bro. <laughs> But okay, so I'm going to do one that I know we haven't done. Um, it is, I want to say, an 80s classic with, again, an amazing freaking cast. Uh, I believe Charlie Sheen is in it. I know Marlon Brando is in it. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, no, no. Ah, yes. That, that, that's <laughs> enough that you know what exactly is coming out. I and love it. the smell of napalm in the morning. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, Apocalypse Now is this week. Woo! This Francis week, Ford Coppola's say, masterpiece. That came, that came out in the eighties. I thought it came out in the seventies, like late seventies, like seventy nine. <laughs> it was filming in the seventies. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. It was like that. That was the filmmaking disaster. That's what killed the Coppola family, actually. Really? For the longest time. Yeah, they. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola shot ninety. Hours of footage. What the flying shit? Yeah. He had to sell his castle that he had. He sold his his uh, vineyard that they had. He sold his other house. I mean, the, the man literally sold half the things that he owned for this movie. Yeah, for that one scene, right? The napalm, the, the fucking the bombing. Oh, more than that. It was the, the boat scene, flying the boat. Uh, the scene with the the napalm. The, There's so many different scenes that had like these ninety intricacies. hours, Jesus. ninety hours of footage, and they shot actually in fucking uh, what do you call it? Um, what's this place called? Um, Vietnam. Oh, God damn it! No, it wasn't Vietnam. It was, Vietnam. <laughs> it was close to Vietnam. God damn it! Cambodia. Cambodia? I want to. No, it's not Cambodia either because they're they're at war too. Uh, I think it was Laos, actually. Okay, I love how I love how William and I were both like Cambodia. 
Uh, I from what I remember, it's been a very long time since I've seen this movie, but I enjoy it. I do remember it being kind of long. It was seventy nine, by the way. The movie came out in nineteen seventy nine. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying, I feel like this movie's long. I don't know how long it is. Is like, is it almost three hours? Oh yeah, yeah. This is it's two and a half hours long, just a regular version. If you get the the director's cut, it's almost three hours. The Redux or whatever the fuck yeah. it's called. Which, if you're gonna watch the movie, watch the Redux. Don't watch the the regular. What's theatrical. the difference between the two? There's a lot of extra footage, and it makes certain scenes. Uh, particularly Marlon Brando's like slow decline to insanity, uh, understandable, and why he did it. And also, there's scenes with Martin Sheen where where he kind of he mimics the behavior that he does more. So you actually get like flushing out the characters. I just I'm, I'm remembering this. I'm sorry, the scene from fucking uh, <laughs> from The Godfather when he's like, "They massacred my boy." I'm sorry. I just love his like face in that scene. Oh god damn it. That scene is so fantastic. Um but yeah, it's been a while. I I'm not going to uh, you know, I'm not going to say if it should or should not be on this list cuz I don't really remember the movie that much and I I feel like I'd be doing a disservice saying yes or no. So yeah, I'll I'll leave this one up to you two boys over there. I think it does. I would probably put it in the 50s, though. In the 50s? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, William? See, I believe that it does, and I think that it belongs in, like, 20 to 30. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Good morning. Oh, fucking everything blowing up. And uh, what- like, well, well, What's great is that, like, you have, like, this movie, and then you have, like, Full Metal Jacket, which, like... Yes. There's... They're not the same movie. They're the same movie, but they're different movies. Because both of them are obviously about the military. Uh, they're, they're being, you know, one. But one is so much. It shows you that you don't have to go to war to lose your mind in the military. Yeah. You know, exactly. we'll, we'll pull the old jacket anyway. Yeah. yeah. And this one is like, this is what happens when you go to war. This is not like. Yeah. And I'm not taking anything away from it, but this is not American Sniper. This is not like come back, come home, and you're a hero, and they'll make movies about you. Like you will die out there, you will lose your mind, you will die more ways than one, but you will die out there. And and that's why I put it as high as I do because yeah. of the reality that this movie portrays. Which I want to say up until that point, um. They had done they it. Really, they were huh? They had done it, but they didn't tackle it the way that they did in this. I mean, because Manchurian Candidate was one of those films. Yeah, well, Manchurian Candidate was like a little different. Because Manchurian Candidate was like the the whole military experiment of how they can make you do things without you realizing it, and they. I mean, that's kind of what, what Apocalypse Now does, uh, kind of goes into, though. Because, I mean, that's what Marlon Brando's character kind of does. And it, it's kind of the breaking point, the, the insanity point, but also the manipulation of the government and how the government actually gets in your mind and fucks you over and is part of the industrial complex, the industrial military complex that that's being discussed in Manchurian Candidate. That's the whole message that Francis Ford Coppola is trying to get across is that the, this industrial complex has no, no, what do you call it? Room for humanity. And everybody that goes into it loses their humanity. Uh, it's the same reason we have movies like full metal jacket, like Jacob's ladder, like uh, the wall. It's, it's all talking about the same story. Yeah. They're yeah. different wars, but they're all the same story. They're all about people and humans going out there and losing their humanity because they are forced to lose their humanity because they're behaving inhumanely and they're all doing it in the name of some far off freaking Lord and King or president. They're all the same shit. Speaking of, uh, wars, uh, you know, last week was the, uh, 74th anniversary of D day, right? Yes. it was. Um, they awarded a 96-year-old veteran, American veteran, who's, who was in D-Day. Uh, my man is, like, good, like, 
mentally all there. Like, he looks good. Like, he's not even using, like, a cane or a walker to walk, which is incredible. And uh, the French president awarded him with some uh, some medal that, like, barely any Americans ever get. It's like a French, like, medal that they barely give to anybody wow. outside of the country. That's amazing. Um, I was just surprised to see people alive. I was like, I thought all the veterans were dead. I thought so, too. I was I like, thought there was only, like, one or two. Yeah. No, there was, like, a bunch of them. Wow. They were all in their 90s, well, of course. You think it was, what, like... 74 years, years ago. 74 right? years ago. So let's say you're 20. Years ago. Let's say you were 20 years old. You were, you're 94 now. Yeah. Let's say the youngest yeah. The youngest you were is what, 16? 18. Yeah. Eight? No. no I, think, I think you could get in when you're 16. If, you're, if, you're, yeah. if your parents signed you off, I'm pretty sure you could get in when you're 16. Uh, Which, okay, yeah, 16. Uh, so 16, right? 74 plus 16, that's 90. You're 90. Jeez. Like you're yeah. still old as shit, even if you were young as hell, if, if serving in World War Two. Yeah, seriously. So, but I I definitely think that this deserves to be up there for sure, movie wise. Okay, so that's uh, oh, yeah, no. from both of the from both of the boys. It definitely deserves to be on this list. Uh, so two yes and one abstain. <laughs> yeah, one abstaining because I would. I, yeah, I just don't feel good talking about a movie that I don't really remember. So. Um, all right, guys. So stay tuned after this quick little break when we come at you live with the main segment of our show, the main review, which is a name that I'm not going to say because it is very, very long, and I'm just lazy and I don't feel like saying it. And I watched the wrong version. <laughs> hey, you lovely nerds! This is Nisha. I'm your geek mom from Diversely Geek. Diversely Geek is a global nonprofit that promotes self acceptance by highlighting the positive message of fandom. We're all fans of something that has affected us for the better. We like to express that love by embracing our inner geeks with you all on our podcast, Diversely Geek Discusses. We also have a podcast for any Whovians out there called Doctor Who in Review. We often partner with Man Bites Media, so you're bound to come across us sooner or later. You can find us all on our podcast platforms as Diversely Geek Discusses and on social media platforms as Diversely Geek. You can also subscribe on our website, diverselygeek.org, where you can find our podcast videos, original content articles, and so much more. And remember, there's some good in this world, Mr. Asland. All right, guys, welcome back for the main segment of our show, the main review live. And that is, <clears throat> stick with me for a second. We got The Last Drive In with Joe Bob Briggs Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bowl Orama. So the actual movie is called uh, Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bowl Orama. And then this is kind of like uh, they added 30 minutes. Uh, with uh, this guy Joe Bob Briggs, the last driving with Joe Bob Briggs, where he like reviews. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on yeah, hold on, go, on. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This guy, no, no, no. This guy, <laughs> nah, bro. The the man <laughs> is a fucking legend. All right, the man was the person that at least for so many of my friends introduced us to horror movies. Like we. I watched this when it was Monster Vision, which was like 80s, like real, real late TV show that they would do these god awful fucking horror movies. But insight into movie making and insight into anything that's involved in the actual making of the film or behind the scenes. This man was a fucking wealth of knowledge and still is. Take a breath, bro. Take a breath. And, I, I feel oh, you. I feel you and, losing air. And... He's found his weekly article. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll say this. This movie's shit, but it's good shit. It's, <laughs> it's real bad that it's good. And it really, like, oh. uh So, yeah, so um, he basically every so often interjects. Like, at the beginning, before the movie starts, he talks. That was not... So, I didn't know who Joe Bob Briggs is um, until now. Um at the beginning, I I even said in the chat, I'm like, yo, this guy's commentary is, it's just lame. It was just boring. But as, uh, like, when they played the movie and he started, like, coming on, like, every so often in the middle and then at the end, I actually liked his commentary in those parts. But in the beginning, yeah. I was just like, this is boring as fuck. Like, he was You gotta remember, this is the fifth movie in his marathon. 
So it's already been five other movies, and he was finishing up talking about the last movie, mm, jumping into this one. Gotcha. Okay, so that's that's probably the reason why. So it, the way that they cut the film, they cut the the segments was kind of weird. Yes, and that's where it kind of gets lost on on people. But it, if you're just watching one movie, you can't just do that. You got to go and watch the whole marathon. Obviously, we didn't have time to do that, so we, I chose one movie in particular in the marathon. Yeah, yeah. And By the that, way, I saw that they no. have um, my favorite uh, sleepaway camp. Yes, they do, Ugh. and he has one of the actresses come out as well get the fuck out oh yeah 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 yeah. i actually so to to give you some like uh, insight i actually was thinking of like because it's my turn to choose the movie um i actually was thinking of choosing um sleepaway camp i don't know if you guys would like that one uh or like are you william have you ever seen it (laughs) uh i believe i have (laughs) <laughs> you would remember if you saw it <laughs> yeah i think you'd remember um okay then I'll, that'll be my choice so whatever um but okay so going this, back to this movie yeah this movie is just fun i mean this is what horror movies were back in the 80s and 90s it was just it's just a b stupid. it's a b it's a what? schlock film like it's b up the ass like it's basically about uh, three really nerdy guys in um, I'm assuming college. Yeah. Uh, and they break into this uh sorority um initiation. Uh, three girls are initiating to they're pledging two girls into the sorority and they get caught. And one of the girls, the head of the sorority. By the way, I love that the sorority only has three members. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm like, it's just dumb. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so the head of the sorority tells them that they all need to go to the uh, local bowling alley and steal like a trophy and bring it back, and then the two girls will be allowed to join the sorority. And uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna spoil because fuck it, whatever. It's oh the imp, the imp. Yeah, the, the imp is like a cross between uh John or uh, uh oh what's his name uh. Oh my God, Darth Vader! Uh, James Christ. James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones and like uh, Chris Rock or something like that. This is really I mean, bad. It, it is. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, hilarious. so they meet this girl Spider, <laughs> which I I love her. Like her acting is fucking horrendous. Oh yeah, um, it is. like her, like the way she delivers lines and stuff like that. There's no emotion whatsoever. And she became a huge uh, actress in trauma films, actually. Yeah, she's a screen so queen. She, he, he, like, talks yeah. about her through, throughout the entire movie. Um, yeah. So, yeah, basically they meet her. She's trying to rob the place, blah, blah, blah. They they get the trophy. The trophy is uh, dropped. And for some odd reason, there's an imp trapped <laughs> in this trophy. And the imp decides to basically, you know, grant them wishes. And then the wishes, like, backfire. And... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you bypassed the best part Which is... of the, the movie Which is... the introduction of the janitor oh, the janitor, the janitor. <laughs> it's this drunk ass like ridiculously unkempt uh yeah. old guy is he deaf is... or is he listening to music i can't tell i don't know but he, he's... A little bit of both. what was that uh, he's somewhere I said a little bit of both. Oh, a little bit of both? Okay. I, I think gotcha. he's recovering from a hangover, and, and he's like, I I just, I don't know. He's probably on the spectrum, honestly. Jesus <laughs> Christ. What's the, what's the line that he says? God damn that fucking imp. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That is the best line ever. I made, I had to make a meme and send it to the boys once I saw <laughs> that. Like, it was, like, yes. It was really bad. Um. Honestly, the entire movie I was rooting. All I wanted was for Calvin to end up with Spider. That's literally. <laughs> I was like, "Yo, hit it up, dude! Like, you got this in the bag. Come on!" And um, <laughs> the movie's like not that violent. The, the it's more it's for not. new. It's just the nudity. There's like gr- there's like just gratuitous nudity. Yeah, in the which movie. is it's a thing of the horror films from the eighties yeah. and nineties. Like this that, is that like full kind of... frontal like nudity basically like yeah you see you see soul patch of the pelvis or yeah you see bush yeah you see you definitely see soul some patch of the pelvis. <laughs> I've never ever heard it called that 
so yeah, um, yeah. We, we, okay, so let's go through the deaths. We got one guy gets decapitated. We and yes. then they bowl with his head. Yes, then, that was my favorite part. Then and there, it doesn't even make it the whole way, which was great. Then we got was... we got a uh, the other friend. I couldn't tell if they were dipping his head in like hot oil or if it was a fucking yep, stone. hot oil. Nope, hot oil. I, okay. Then uh, we got the girls that one of them turns into the Bride of Frankenstein for some <laughs> odd reason. This... I did not get that. I did not understand why all of a sudden. <laughs> I felt like I was watching a monstrous movie. And I'm like, I was waiting for one of them. I was honestly waiting for the guy that the cat hit in the head to, for them to sew his hat back on and him and the brother Frankenstein, like, hook up. I'm not even going to lie. That's what I thought was going to happen. No, that was Idle Hands. Yes, that is Idle Hands. <laughs> honestly, like... Which, I love that movie, guys. I don't know if... Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good movie. Honestly, um... I can't even remember the name of the movie half the time. It's such a fucking long title. Oh, yeah. Forget about it. And you forget half the words and all that stuff. It, it's just, yeah. We yeah. we will mention the name of the movie below. Yeah. So please check it out. Honestly. Because we're, we're got off what's saying. I, I got it. I got it in front of me. So honestly, Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bowl Orama. Jesus Christ, what a mouthful. <laughs> um, oh, God. It's not a great movie. It's definitely uh, really schlocky. It doesn't take itself seriously whatsoever. But it, it, it is a good uh, time. Um, and if you have Shudder, uh, this is streaming on there. They have the normal version, and then they have the one with uh, the commentary by Joe Bob Briggs. But you got to watch the Joe Bob. Come yeah, it, it was... A, it was love fun. how, like, Spider's motorcycle was, like, <laughs> I don't know... I, I know it was supposed to be like this badass motorcycle. Oh, I, I could not imagine it being more than like a moped. Like it looked like a moped. It was a like, motor. Like, I'm pretty sure it's a moped. motocross bike. Something like I think so too. Like a motocross bike. Oh yeah, it was. It was just. My, I don't know. Like I was thinking of her like riding off with like a Harley or some shit. Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean. Yeah, they probably didn't have the budget for Harley though. That's the problem. Yeah, probably. They probably used it all in like the, the bowling head. No, they probably use it all by by fucking like uh, the imp, the imp. No, or or fucking uh, basically <laughs> renting days. out the mall so that they can film during the night. You know, in seven days, in and seven, seven days, days. Oh, and it was so racist. <laughs> Why did the black imp sound like he just walked out of Compton for some reason? Yeah, <laughs> and the weird teeth. Oh, the teeth freaked me out. Like, seriously, like, if Gim... Uh, what is it that I sent you? If Gimli and who... Like, no, not Gimli. A, uh, Gollum and somebody else. Gollum? Huh? Wait, wait, I'm trying Gollum to... Gollum and somebody else. Yeah, if Gollum and somebody else had a baby, this is who it would come out with. And, and, and it was sounded like, I don't know, like, Will Smith in season one of the uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. If Gollum and yeah. the Leprechaun had a baby. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah. it. Gollum Leprechaun had a baby. That's who this guy would be. Like, like no lie. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's not. It, it doesn't take itself so seriously. It's a good time. It's short, um, but definitely watch it with the Joe Bob Briggs uh, commentary. I'll give it like a seven. It was enjoyable. It definitely. And then I saw that they had a sleepaway camp, and I was like, <laughs> oh god, I need to watch more of these. They're so bad, but they're so good at the same time. Oh, there's some really good ones too. Like, have you seen I, all? I, uh, honest... Have you seen the entire like? Series? Yeah, yeah. I watched it live when it happened. Oh, when did this happen? Probably seen every movie on Shutter. Let's be that honest. That actually killed the internet. It killed uh, Shutter for for like a good like six hours or something like that. It crashed the whole. Oh, network. so this was happening on Shutter, but like live on Shutter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a full marathon, like an actual proper marathon. Oh my and god! So like, it broke Shutter. Like it broke them. Like it, they they had to shut down service for five hours. That's hilarious. And, and upgrade their servers and shit. That's and funny. buy more servers because they didn't have space. People, it was just crashing. Yeah, it's it's honestly. Um, thank you for picking this. At the beginning, I was like, "What the fuck am I watching?" And then towards like <laughs> a, as it progressed, I was like, "Okay, I I could I could fuck with this. Like it's it's really bad, but in a good way." Exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely probably going to be watching some of the other ones, and we will be watching it for the next <laughs> uh, episode. 
Awesome. And I would give this I'm probably 6.5. Six or six point five. Okay, it's a good movie. It's fun, um, but it's not a great movie. Yeah, it's not. Uh, William, how about you? Yeah, I'm with you, boys. Uh, probably like around a good six point five seven. It's an eighty. Yeah. Low budget, scary movie, and you get to see Taka. So you do that. You know, you can, you, you can never go wrong when you can see Taka. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Endorsed by William, you get to see Tatas. Endorsed see, by the Tatas. Well, what do we call it? Pelvic Soul Patch. Yeah, we also get to see a lot of Pelvic Soul Patch. Oh, I forgot. They also kill one of the girls by pulling her like Taffy, and her name is Taffy. <laughs> so dumb. I love it. Um, Alright, guys. So stay tuned after this quick little break when we come at you, not live. With the final segment of our show, the individual reviews. Woohoo! I did good. You did good. Yay! As the songs of awakening rang through, the world was created. The silence was broken. Middle Earth, with its rolling hills, broken mountains, flowing rivers, and beautiful forest, was created. Cellar Door is a journey into the mythology the mystery, and the beauty of Middle-earth. Sit back, close your eyes, and imagine. Alright guys, welcome back for the final segment of our shoe. Shoe. What? Shoe? Shoe! 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 Shoes your boy. I don't know why. <laughs> Welcome back for the final segment of our show. Shoe. <laughs> the individual reviews. <laughs> William is going to be going first this week. I suck. Go. Go ahead. <laughs> um. Sorry. Right. So this week's um show is on Netflix, and I just happened to stumble upon it while looking for something else. I don't even remember what the hell. I was looking for at the time, but um, it's one season. I think it's like five or six episodes at most. Um, if you like roasts, you will enjoy this show. Um, it's called Literally Historical Roasts. Hmm. Never, and never heard of it. It's obviously, yeah, it's obviously um, the, the, the Grand Master is uh, Jim Rock. As you know, he is the roast master, and literally, it's about twenty minute episodes, and they roast historical figures. What? What's the uh, name of the uh, show again? The first one, historic, historical roast. Oh, historic. Okay. Stay with me on that. I know. <laughs> um. Uh, the first one is uh, the first episode, is, and and they're all. Uh, what do we call it? Like the, both the historical people and the roast are all people either from that era, but they're also like known comedians. Like the first episode, for example, is Abraham Lincoln. Bob Saget plays a, a, plays Abraham Lincoln, and um, uh, Booth is actually played by uh, what's his name, uh, Jesse Kasopoulos, uh Uncle Jesse, uh, John Stamos. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then you have one where Fred Willard plays God, which was actually really good. You have uh, Muhammad Ali is another main roast. There's a very, and I will say this <laughs> in caps, very unpolitically correct roast of Anne Frank. <laughs> oh my. And I will leave it as that God. for that one because holy crap. Uh, Cleopatra is another one that they roast. Uh, what were the other ones? Uh, uh, oh, MLK. Is, oh my God. Is another one. Yep. Um, so, and, and obviously, this is to be taken very lightheartedly. This is not a serious show whatsoever this is not a show that you sit and like 
you will get butt hurt over it. Have a sense like, of humor simple, about it. Like, exactly. Have, an, have a big, wide... Like, if you listen to the show and you listen to us talk, it's that kind of sense of humor. Like, you don't go into it going, oh, I want to sit and enjoy this and watch just with the kids. No. Yeah. To put it in perspective, Gilbert Gottfried plays Hitler. <laughs> Oh, I'm watching this already. That's it. You sold me on that. Oh my god! A Jew, a Jew, plays Hitler. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, it like I said, like I binge watched it in just a, like a couple of hours. Like I, like I said, they're like I want to say like twenty, twenty five minute episodes each. So like you know, sitting for like two hours. Um. I feel like I'm missing some really good ones, and I can't think of it right at the moment. But oh, I'm um, watching this for sure. That that sounds just brilliant. Uh, it's only one season. I'm hoping that they renew the season because I think it's got a lot of potential um, for what it is, and for the comedic value of it, and. Even for me, it made me go oi at times. Uh, I give it a good eight out of ten. Um, nice. Jeff Ross is like he is really good with what he does. Everybody brings it. Nobody really holds back. Uh, oh, Freddie Mercury. That's another one that is the, like the main roaster. So to put it, nice. and he's roasted by Lady Diana. Uh, he's roasted by Lady Diana. Uh, oh, oh, um, the Goblin King. Oh, um, ah, David Bowie. <laughs> David Bowie, and then like <laughs> I would say, like yeah, uh, and and I forgot who else it was, but like th- that's pretty perspective. Like, and and have fun with it, enjoy it. I don't want to hear anybody come back to me and complain that, oh my god, this movie made me really sad because they make fun of Anne Frank. I'm <laughs> warning you. Anne Frank is the main roastee, and Adolf Hitler is one of the roasters. It's that kind of show. <laughs> again, do not sit with the kids and watch this. Again. But, um, yeah. And like I said, I just happened to stumble upon it. I'm hoping that they renew it. It was very worth it. And um, yeah, just Sweet. go enjoy. Be merry. Be merry. <laughs> Be merry. All right. Jesus. Okay. So, okay. I'm debating trying to figure out what I want to review this week. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Um, either... oh, no, 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 no. You already give us multiple choice when it comes to picking the damn movie. <laughs> We're not going to pick your damn review for you. Pick one, put your big boy pants on, and pick, damn it. Anyway, so, what were the <laughs> Warehouse 13 or Good uh, Omens? The show? Yes. Or Good Omens? Which one's that one? Oh. Oh, oh, so oh that one. Can... Okay, sorry. I had a, I had a brain fart. Like the one that the entire internet has been talking that, about. Yeah, yeah, but, Sorry, you know, sorry, you know, sorry. I had a brain fart. Um... I want to be an asshole and make you talk about Warehouse 13. <laughs> God. Yeah, I say do it. <laughs> okay. Awesome. My vote. There you go. We voted. Warehouse 13 is one of my favorite shows, first of all. I've actually met about half the fucking cast, and they're all as brilliant as they are in the show. This is the story of, you know, the end oh, of Raiders of Brian the Lost Ark. The the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, wow. one of the episodes they do. Um, but. Uh, what do you call it? The end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where they go into that warehouse and this giant warehouse stores all of the United States secrets. Well, Warehouse 13 doesn't just house the secrets of the United States. It houses all the world's secrets. And these are all, uh, what do you call it, artifacts that are like something got attached to them. There's, for example, there's, uh, what do you call it, um... Cecil P. DeMille's uh, whipping cross, uh, whipping um, the thing to, to whip the horses. That, uh, what do you call it? Yes, there you go. 
I, I got mixed up with the words. Anyways, but that one actually controls people if they use it. Um, each of these artifacts are embodied with these special powers by certain scenarios in history. Like, uh, what do you call it? The, there's a porthole of Titanic that when you open the porthole to somebody, it freezes them. Um, like different things like that. Of, of I'm sorry, it, what? It, what it now? freezes the person in front of the porthole. Okay. So, uh, what do you call it? There's another one that it's it's a clay jar. Uh, if you open the clay jar, uh, magma comes out of it, and it's it's uh, one of the pottery that was left over from Pompeii. Each of these artifacts are embodied with something of the tragedy that occurred to them. And these people, they go out. They're secret agents, basically. The they're, the two in this particular show are a secret service, and the main guy, which is the the caretaker of the warehouse was actually NSA. And what they do is they go out on missions to find these artifacts. They get a, a bing, like they call it. And they, they get, they find some news that's kind of odd and, and out of place. And they send these two agents to go rescue the artifact that they're talking about in that particular episode. And there's some amazing overarching stories in this show that there's one in particular which is done by one of my favorite actresses in this show. It's uh, She plays H.G. Wells. And yes, I said that right. She plays H.G. Wells. Uh, it turns it's out that... Doctor H- Who fan, nothing really bothers me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but H.G. Uh, Wells is actually a female and he, she is giving the stories to her brother to sell because obviously back then they cannot sell those ideas as a woman. So she's actually a, uh, what do you call it? Female. And the reason she actually comes up in the show and comes out in the show, there's a thing that they actually basically encapsulate people in bronze. And it's like a, uh, like a, what do you call it? Um, where they freeze people and they keep them, on ice basically so it's the same thing just bronze and the warehouse one of the warehouse agents they they if they find you to be they deem you to be such an insane person or somebody that's capable of destroying the world then they encapsulate you in bronze and keep you in a section in the warehouse spoilers (laughs) they unbronze hg and she becomes one of the main villains in, throughout the show because of all the inventions that she did and all these things, she loses her mind. And I don't want to go any further into her character because it is phenomenal in this show. Um, it's comparable to any of any Doctor Who fans out there. Missy, she it's that kind of mastermindness. And the acting is on par with... Uh, with um, uh, what's her face? Um, oh, my God. Miss Gomez. I can't remember her first name. Miss Gomez? But the one that plays Missy. Oh, um, oh, Jesus. Oh. Yeah. So this show has, I believe, six seasons. And I, I've i watched this show like three or four times straight through. It, it's such a great show. Um, it, it's definitely one of the ones that I would definitely recommend up there with Farscape, with Battlestar Galactica, that, that kind of if Mich- you like Michelle Farscape, Gomez, Michelle Gomez, there you go. Um, what do you call it? The if you like that kind of humor, that dark humor, like Farscape, like Doctor Who, like um, a lot of these British shows, then you'll like this. It's very much that style with a historical and kind of adventure twist to it. Okay, nice. So, uh, ten out of ten for me, show wise. God damn. Yeah. All right, um, I'm also going to be reviewing a show. Uh, just an episode, though. So, oh, yeah, um, <laughs> I, finally got a, uh, I, I finally got to watching the newest season of Black Mirror. Woo! Uh, oh. I haven't seen the, the, the last episode, but I did see, uh, uh, what is it, something Viper and uh, Smithereens. I haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it yet? Okay. No, not yet. That's my next one. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna be. I gotta finish. I gotta finish uh, Warehouse 13. Oh, which I didn't mention. Um, to find this, you actually gotta go to Free Dive. 
Free Dive is a free, uh, what do you call it, provider. And it works with IMDb. You just got to sit through commercials every like 20 minutes. But it's completely free. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to pay a dime into it. IMDb TV? It, no, it's Free Dive is the name of the, the app. Interesting. Okay. So if you have like a fire stick or something, just uh, type in Warehouse 13 and it'll pop up for you and it'll automatically start playing for free. Interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. Yep. 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 IMDb has its own thing, its own streaming network. Okay. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be reviewing the second episode of season five of Black Mirror called Smithereens. I'm very surprised you haven't seen it, Lewis, because. I know. I know. <laughs> I've been slacking. Uh, this is the episode that stars uh, Topher Grace, uh, which is the actor that plays uh, Eric Foreman on that 70s show, for anyone that yeah. doesn't know. So all these episodes star one uh, basically uh, super famous person. So the first uh, episode stars Anthony Mackie, which is the guy that plays uh, Falcon or Sam Wilson in uh, Avengers. Uh, then you got in the second one, which I'm reviewing, you got Topher Grace. And then in the third and final episode, you got uh, Miley Cyrus. So, uh, Sm- <clears throat> I'm I'm in between the two, like, Smith- the the first episode, I forgot its, its name, uh, Striking Vipers, that's the name of the episode. That was weird. And I don't want to really review it because there's kind of something that's, uh, like, I don't want to spoil, like, the surprise which doesn't happen yeah. too late in the episode, but whatever. So I'm just going to go Smithereens. So, um, Smithereens is about this, uh, guy who, uh, basically is a, like, Uber Lyft driver. It's not in, it's set, like, in 2018, I think they say in the, in the episode. And he basically is outside he he always takes rides from outside of this um company called smithereens and he always asks the person that gets in the car if they work for this company and for the most part they say no so one time when uh this young black guy gets into the car He's like he he's like all right cool you're going to the airport all right cool let's go and he tells him um he asks him do you work for this for Smithereen and he's like yeah and he's like oh okay cool and the guy the kid is basically super into his phone doesn't really like look up for whatever reason and he proceeds to drive the kid to the middle of nowhere and he parks the car underneath a bridge and he basically tells the kid he kidnaps the kid and he tells him to get in the car and that he wants basically to talk to the CEO of the Smithereens uh, Corporation. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Oh, OK. Um, It's re- it's really interesting. This one definitely hits a bit more home. I'm not going to go into like detail why, but like. You know how like Black Mirror always has like those like um like the the deeper messages behind their episodes and whatnot, and sometimes yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a little futuristic. It's something that's like okay for now this is far fetched, but maybe in the future this is not. No, this one's like it takes place in 2018, so it's very it hits very close to home. Uh, the acting is really good. This one takes uh place primarily in the UK, and then there are some scenes in in uh, America. Uh, I'm enjoying the the I'm enjoying it. I definitely think I like this episode more than the first episode. The first episode's fucking weird. Um, and okay, and that's because of the the twist. Uh, I don't know how I feel. <laughs> when I was watching it. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, and I'm very <laughs> curious to see what you guys uh would like would say about striking vipers. The first one. I think this one's a much um better written episode and it's more grounded and i think that's why that's what makes it more frightening than some of the other stuff that you watch from black mirror and uh but yeah i'm enjoying the season and i i'm gonna be checking it out i want to see the 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 last episode which is called rachel jack and ashley 2 which is the one with miley cyrus i'll probably be watching that tomorrow or one of these days but i'm i'm enjoying it i definitely like black mirror a lot 
Uh, but this episode, I really, really enjoyed it. But nothing, still nothing compares to San Junipero. God, I love that episode so much. That, has, that yeah, episode that, is that's... incredible. Yeah, agreed. Um, I know. I know. Eventually, I'm gonna give it its fair chance, but like, I'm deep grounded with Twilight Zone, and especially now well, with so am I. the new the new version of it. Oh, yeah, I think new... that's why I've been skeptical. Like, not, I'm not saying the show is bad at all. I'm not. Cause I'm, I think I've seen like one episode of it, but I think what's like stopping me. I feel like I'm almost. I don't say like cheating on. Um, what should I call it? Twilight Zone. Uh, on Twilight Zone? It's not, though. They're very different. Yeah, they are. They're completely different. Like, uh, what do you call it? Twilight Zone is political. It's a, what do you call it? Social satire. This is, is more technology satire. Yeah. Only. Yeah, this is def. This show is all about technology, dude. Like, how frightening technology can be. It's not it's, everything. Yeah. But Twilight Zone was everything. It was, it was the perfection of, of science fiction thriller. I yeah. mean, th- this is. You're you're talking about a completely different subject, and I am a huge, huge fan of Twilight Zone, uh, and it's it's completely different material. I mean, yeah. you can't compare the two. Uh, this is a lot darker. Uh, with yeah, Twilight. like Twilight Zone wasn't always dark. Yeah, twi- dude. Like for the most part, I would say that ninety percent of the episodes on Black Mirror always end like badly. Yeah, like Twilight Zone was more like twenty percent ended badly. Yeah. <laughs> it was very. Y'all ain't seen the new Twilight Zone, have you? I have not. Uh, the new Twilight Zone is shit. That's why. What? It's garbage. Oh, oh, baby, that's for another day. Oh, that's for another day. So yeah, Black Mirror, check it out. Um, the the season is super short, and uh. This is a great show because, like Twilight Zone, it's an anthology series. So literally, you can watch any episode in any order, and you will be perfectly fine. Uh, so definitely watch it. Uh, these episodes are long. This one's seventy, and I think the other one was seventy, seventy minutes, sixty-one minutes. Um, oh, they're doing the Game of Thrones route. Yeah, and then the last one. <laughs> let me see how long the last one is. It is sixty-seven. So the Smithereens. The one I'm re- uh, reviewing is the the longest episode of season five. But definitely, I'm enjoying it. Um, it's a great show. Check it out. It's it's on Netflix. I'll give it Sweet. a. I guess Smithereens like an eight. I think it's it's a really good episode. Eight eight point five. For sure. Nice. For sure, nice. dude. All right, Brandon. So, what movie are you gonna give us? Uh so fuck it. We're gonna do it. Um, we're doing the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs sleepaway camp. I just wanna. Okay. <laughs> If I hope that you've never seen this movie, or if you have, William, I hope that you've forgotten. Especially the especially end. the ending. I remember. So to give you to give some backstory, my cousin brought this movie um, <laughs> a couple years back when he was visiting uh, Miami from Orlando, and uh, it's it's a bad movie. You know, it's it's like <laughs> it's like uh, Sorority Babes. It's, you know, it's a it's a B slasher film or a B horror film, and I remember just like watching like, all right, cool. This is kind of bad. And then like the ending happens and I was like, this is awesome. I am totally <laughs> about this movie now. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what uh, William's reaction is to the movie. So William, watch the one with the commentary by Joe Bob Briggs. Yes. Seriously. Which I've never, I've never seen it with the commentary either. So that's going to be fun. Um, and I hope he doesn't give anything away in the commentary. He does not at all. He 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 builds the suspense. Okay, cool, cool, awesome, drastically, awesome, awesome. Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoy our show, uh, remember to visit uh, Man Bites Film or Man Bites Media. Sorry, uh, dot com, right? Yes. And uh, diversityleak dot org. Diversityleak. Yes. Dot org. Yeah, that's what I said. Diversityleak dot org. Did I say that correctly? Uh, yeah. and also, uh, if you like, uh, so yeah, check out John on YouTube as Narcotic Casserole and also our friends, con friends, the other podcasts. So if you're into conventions and convention life, listen to them, of course. Uh, thank you, William. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Louis. Thank you. And we're going to, we're going to do one more thing before we wrap up. Um, we, this is the week of the anniversary or remembrance at anniversary because we don't want to 
this is a tough subject for a lot of people. Um, this is obviously Pride Month as well. And on top of that, the, the tragedy that occurred on June 12th um, here in Orlando with the Pulse shooting is something that's very sensitive to not only our community here in Orlando, but everywhere, honestly. And I think that I just wanted to, and I think all you guys agree with me on this, is that we should do a little moment of silence at the end of the show uh, in dedication to the lives that were lost and the the love that we showed after the hatred that was shown to them and the fact that our community and all the communities here in Orlando came together and we joined we joined hands everybody you it was incredible seeing that at that that vigil that year the the candlelit procession and everything that was occurring uh, in front of the Dr. Phillips Center, it was something to behold. Like everybody from completely different walks of life were sitting there together. All any types of cultural barriers were completely wiped away. Our communities had no, no, there was nothing but love and and peace in that moment that we we're all holding our hands. And that is the best thing that we could get away from we could take away from this tragedy that occurred because unfortunately we can't turn back time and stop it from happening. Um, so William, I don't know if you wanted to say anything. I mean, the, one of the hashtags, uh, I think it was like the first and second year, I think it was the, the, the one, one year memorial um, was love more uh, hate less. Yeah. And I immediately did not like it because you should not hate. Like, if you don't like something, it's your prerogative not to like something, not to understand it or say it's not for me, it's whatever the case may be. But my hashtag has been since that day uh, talking about anything of the, of the sort is love more and hate. Yep. Because without hate, things like this will not happen. And I'm not going to get into too much of it, into it for this episode. But just keep in mind, if your religion makes you hate someone for no reason whatsoever, you need a new religion. Because no religion should push hate onto somebody else for any reason whatsoever. Yep. And it, it not necessarily a religion, but a group. If you're part of a group that says, you know, if you're part of this group, you hate gay people. If you're part of this group, you hate straight people, Muslims. Put yourself in their, in your, in their shoes. If you were the ones targeted, would you be okay with that? And if the answer is no, well, then there's your answer. Yep. You should just not be part of it. Agreed 100%. Um, and, and this is why we end up in times like we are now, where we lost 49 souls for the sole reason that somebody believed that it was wrong and they hated it. So love more and hate. Agreed Ooh, that's 100%. all I got to say. Thank you guys, honestly, for, for um, ending the show in, in – unfortunately this gloomy sense but also this hopeful sense that that maybe these instances aren't in vain and we can actually use this as uh, a talking conversation uh, conversation starter with everybody and anybody and try to end this hatred that we have towards each other and maybe we could finally live in peace with each other and stop these kind of just senseless crimes honestly senseless crimes there there was no reason for what occurred at all and um we'll end this show in silence for the first time there will be no music there won't be any credits or anything after after this um so thank you guys and this honestly is in remembrance of of those 49 souls